And up until the next video, have a Feynman day. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Less remake for now, but I still want to talk about this because it's quite important in my opinion. We can use this identity we are going to derive today for, for example, integrating inverse trigonometric functions, which isn't an easy feat in the normal case. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, I would like to present to you guys how to integrate an inverse function with respect to x, for example, dx. And for this, right here to work, we have to suppose that there's an inverse function to this inverse function. What do I mean by that? Suppose we have an inverse function, f to the minus 1, from some uh, set w to v. And what we need to suppose is that there's an inverse function to this inverse function, namely just the, func the function itself, from the set v to w. So that's something we want to hold. Is there an example for it? Well, if you take, for example, the natural log of the absolute value of x as the inverse function, then the inverse function of this inverse function is just e to the x. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe that's an example I can calculate in the end. Never mind. Let's move on. And there's one little property that holds for inverse functions and functions itself. If you use the inverse function of the function of x, in that case, you are just going to end up with the argument in here. So that's something that holds. And we are going to make use of this little fact. So at first, I would like to introduce a little substitution. I would like to substitute this x right here. So let x be equal to f of z, where f is the inverse function to our inverse function, obviously. So why not plug our new x into here, into this integral? So we end up with the integral from f of minus 1 of f of z d f of z. And this might look quite weird, but it does work actually. So there's something that works. And this thing right here, since we have this little theorem, I would say, it's going to evaluate to just z. And now we could use integration by parts on this. And just like I said before, it does look quite weird, but it works. So we need something to differentiate and something to integrate, plus minus. So why not differentiate z right here? We end up with dz. And why not integrate our df of z? So it's just like integrating dx, you are going to end up with an x in the end. So we have f of z right here. Integrating a differential just leaves you with the argument of the differential, you could say. So now we have to multiply this together and take the integral of this thing. And then we are basically done. So we end up with z times f of z and then minus integral of f of z dz. Plus some arbitrary constant c, don't forget that. It's an indefinite integral at this point. And now we can resubstitute, plugging in our definitions for z. For example, so what is z exactly? z is nothing but, if you use the inverse function on both sides, we end up with the inverse function of the function of z. So that's just the argument z. So that means z is nothing but the inverse function of x, where the inverse function is once again this thing we started off and this thing right here. So we can plug all this stuff in. Now we have the inverse function of x times. The function of the inverse function is just the argument itself. So inverse function of the function of x is just x minus. And at this point, we have to suppose that there's a primitive to this integral right here. We are, we are just going to call it capital F. F of, and that would be F of z at this point. But what is z? This is just the inverse function of x plus some arbitrary constant c. And then we are basically done at that point. You can rewrite this a little bit more if you want, this last term right here. So this is f to the minus 1 of x times x minus f composed with the inverse function of x plus some arbitrary constant c. And just like I said in the beginning, we can make use of this thing right here, for example, to integrate the natural log of x quite easily. So um, the natural log of the absolute value of x dx. We would like to integrate this right here. You can do it using integration by parts. It's basically the same idea as down here, but we are going to just use this theorem here. And don't forget, ln x is supposed to be our inverse function with respect to x. But what's the inverse function of ln x? Just like I said in the beginning, it's e of x. 
So f of x is just t to, uh, e to the x, not e of x. You could also say e of x. So when I plug everything in, we have getta. So now we have to use the inverse function, which is our ln x times x. So this is ln x times x. And then we have to use the primitive of e to the x, because this is the inverse function of our inverse function, and the primitive at that. But what is the integral, the primitive of e to the x? That's just e to the x, so that's nice. So we need to use this inverse function on this exponential function. So I'm going to write it that way. Exponential function of our inverse function, which is our ln of x, plus some arbitrary constant c. But the exponential function of the natural log is just x. So we end up with ln of x times x minus x plus some arbitrary constant c. And this thing right here is indeed the primitive to this function right here. Just like I said before, this is quite useful and we are going to use it once I am doing all this trigonometric stuff in the near future after doing Taylor series expansion and stuff like this. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon is in the description and up until the next video, have a Feynman day. See ya!